So welcome to the show. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, Stephen Taylor with you. Make sure to I interact with the show at Stephen Taylor SE on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's an honor for me to have the man himself, Master KG. Brother, brother man, thank you for taking the time out and joining us. Um, how are you today? Oh, thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, it's a good day. Uh, you know, the weather is fine outside. Uh, it's, uh, the, water is, the weather is cool, you know. It's, it's, it's yeah. been like, uh, it's been cloudy since morning, so I, I can't complain. How about you that side? No, 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 good, man. Doing well. But uh, take us back to, I know, Master KG, that's, that's your name. What is, what is your actual, what is your real name? Uh, my real name is uh, Kawe Lomuai. Uh, I, I was actually born in Limpopo, in a village called Kelly's Village. Uh, that's where I grew up. That's where I started making music at, uh, at the villages. So uh, from 2012, that's where uh, I started wanting to get into music. And then around the village, there were guys who had like computers and they had this software called FL Studio. And then I uh, became friends with them. And then from there, you know, I wanted, you know, to know more also. But at that time, I didn't have a computer. And then I was just close to them, always watching them while they used those softwares to produce their songs. And then until a the time where I asked my, uh, my late uncle to buy me a computer, which he did. And then the guy showed me the software. From there, I started learning at, uh, at my own pace, in my own space, trying to know how to make do this. You know. But it took me a lot of time. Like uh, I think from 2012 and, until 2016, that's where you know, 2016, I was starting to make things that were starting to make sense in terms of beat. Uh, they were starting to catch people's attention around the village and around across Limpopo, you know. Yeah. So take us back to your early days. Um, where, did, where did you go to? You went to school in Limpopo, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And how old are you now, if I may ask? Uh, I'm 24 years old now. Okay. So uh, you, were, you were born... At the dawn of democracy, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if my math serves me correctly, I think 94, 95, is that right? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm actually 96. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you went to school in Lampopo. Some of the challenges growing up, were there challenges for you um, being a black person in South Africa during that time? Were, were there still the effects of apartheid when you were growing up? Uh, you know, to be honest, uh, we're at the villages, you know, there was no much that, you know, I think I, I, I would say, you know, we we're crying about, you know, uh, because at the villages there, it was just love. Uh, the people, the surrounding people around the village, they were just showing love. So we never had like problems where we felt like we are suffering, only suffering because, you know, didn't like the, my family uh, was suffering in terms of financially because my mom was the only person that was working. You know, so yeah, that's how, you know, I would say we're suffering because um, she had to look uh, uh, almost like seven people and she was working uh, at, at a hotel where she didn't even get uh, enough money to, to, to support all of us, you know. So, yeah. Uh, and in terms of school, um, I went to school in, in the village, uh, Kelly's Village Secondary School. That's where I actually went to in terms of school. I studied there. I remember, but there was a time around grade 10, that's where I left uh, Kelly Secondary School and I went to, to Charles um, Mantons, which is around also around, around Limpopo, at Sazanin. So I went there and then I did my, I did my grade uh, 10 because I remember I failed at Kelly's, then I did it, I repeated there and Charles, I passed. And then I went to grade 11, there still at Charles Mantons, and then I failed. Then I went back home because <laughs> then, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know, maybe I have to go back home because now they're not working the way I thought they would do. And then I went back home and then I passed grade 11. And then when I went to grade 12, oh, uh, that's when, it was, I think it was around 2017. Yeah, that's where uh, I had my first hit song called Situation around the village. It was, it was a beautiful song. It was loved and cherished. I was starting to get booking, bookings and so forth. And that's where I also... I also ended up getting my first uh, record deal with Open Mic Productions in 2017. Um, and then I remember we signed the deal in, in January and then we saw that they wanted to push that song called Situation to another level so that it can grow. Yeah, and then from there, I remember I went to Matric uh, January and then 
uh, around February, I was like, no, I, I can't do this. Let me take a gap year because I feel like there was a lot happening. I was starting to get bookings around the villages, you know, oh. the taverns, the bars, you know, uh, and then uh, and metric needs someone to focus, you know. And then in metric, you don't get as many chances as you can get in other grades. So I was like, let me, you know, take a break. And then I'll I'll come back and, and when I'm focused and finish my music. So at what age did you start wanting to make music and uh, getting into music? What what age were you doing that? Oh, uh, you know, to be honest, I don't remember. But I think around 13, somewhere there. 13 okay. or so. Yeah. So your first song you had situation, how old were you then? You were about 17, 18 years old. Yes, I was I was about uh, I think it's 19, 19 years old. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, uh, what happened is that I failed some of the grades. So I was not really normal like other kids will do, whereby you say when you grade 12, yeah. we already know how old are you. <laughs> so with <laughs> me, I was repeating some of the grades, you know. No, no, but I know about failing myself. I also fail in school, but failing only makes you better and stronger and helps you to learn and to, to go forward. So failing Big is not time. a bad thing. Failing is not yeah, a bad yeah, thing. Right. Yeah. Okay, so wow, situation. I must actually go look at that song. I haven't heard that song. What is it? Uh, who was vocals on the song? I actually sang the song by myself. Uh, oh, you can uh, sing as well? Yeah, I can sing as well. And I remember, you know, at the village is there, um, you know, um, like, you know, growing up, seeing other people, they just sing. You know, we have, you have that studio, room studio, whereby yes. you just hit the studio by yourself, just starting singing, you know, um, and they were doing that. I also like, you know, let me do this even though i was not a great singer but i was just you know let me let me try my luck and then it happened the song um uh became a hit around around limbo people loved the song so much wow okay so and then um after that what what was your next song after that uh it was 2017 where i had situation and then open mic production tried to push the song didn't really um, do as much as we wanted the song to to do, you know, to go where we wanted the song to go. But then it came 2018. That's why I released Skeleton Move, uh, yes. Zander in, in in February, you know. Uh, and, and then I remember Skeleton Move also uh, took time, you know. It started very very slow. I remember uh, we're like, what's going on now? Because uh, like Skeleton Move was that song that you know when we listened to, we like, this is. This is the one. This is gonna yeah. open many doors, you know. This is gonna. I remember, you know, submitting um on some other radio stations. They were saying, "Oh, this music is not fine." They're criticizing and so forth. But then, certain no. uh, move. I remember something just happened. The song became uh one of the biggest songs in South Africa in 2018, and then out of nowhere, like the song started like catching many people's attention. So, but I also understood that, you know. When you are coming up, it's not really easy to uh, to to get people's attention. You know, yeah, it takes um, time. You, know. you have to work maybe hundred times harder than the, those people that are already there in order to show yourself. So I remember the song started getting attention, and then uh, started playing on TV and radio stations. Some are starting to accept the song, and then from there the song just became a success. I remember in 2018, 2018 the song won um, Summer Song of the Year, which is a wow. competition. SABC that they do yeah. annually. Yeah, and then um, I remember the following year also, I went as far as going to Dallas. Uh, oh, that year actually. And I went to Dallas, Texas. And then I won an Afrima Award for that song. And I also went to Nigeria also. And I won an yeah. award for that song. So uh, the song was just, you know, taking my career to the next level until 2019, uh, where Jerusalem came. That's where, you know, I had to do a follow up of. Uh, you know, skeleton move because skeleton move, uh, like like it made that big gap whereby you know it needed to be filled in. I remember it went as far as making twenty five million views on YouTube, sure. and that was like uh, you know something that you know in, like here in South Africa we don't usually know. No, no, that, that's so massive. easy for us, yeah, to to like to get to that even small twenty five million views. So, but then the song did that. I remember people were starting even to say. This is your biggest song of your career, you know. You'll never have a song like this. The way the song was doing, because and just... then and then it wasn't, and then it, and then Jerusalem came along, and it was. But we'll, I tell you what, Master KJ, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back and talk about uh, Jerusalem and uh, and Superstar and those other songs. But we'll we'll talk about that in a moment. Now our conversation with Master KJ will be back in a moment.
Welcome back. Uh, it's with Stephen Taylor. We're on conversation with the man himself, Master KG, and uh, talking about his life, his career, uh, where it all started. And uh, wow, just to come back to 2019, Jerusalem came out. I, I don't think for many people they, they know that because they only think that the song came out now, but it came out when in 2019? Uh, uh, I would say, you know, um, uh, towards the end of the year, in, in November. Yeah. Uh, it actually came in October, but then officially where it was released on all, like, digital platforms and so forth, it came out uh, on the 29th of November last year. How was the song inspired? Did, how, did, how did that song come about? You know, to be honest, uh, uh, you know, it was, it's just one of those songs. I remember I was in the studio, I made the beat of the song. I think it was around August, early August, and then I made I, I made um, the beat of the song of, of Jerusalem. Then I remember I listened to the beat again and again and again. I was like, you know, this one, you know, um, I just I don't know why. My direction just told me, you know, Nomina will be the perfect person uh, for the yeah. vocals for that song because I wanted that song to be as much as spiritual as it can, you know. So yeah. and I remember the following day, I, I took a call and I called her. I was like, my sister. I have this beautiful beat and I, I feel like uh, you'll be the per perfect person for it. You know, I would love to work with you on the song. And remember, by that time, we never met. We were just talking on, for, on the phone. So uh, she was also happy, uh, you know, to, to work with me because also uh, she was aware of, you know, skeletal move, what it did, you know. So the conversation was just easy, you know. Uh, you know, she also had respect for me as much as I had respect for her. So we made a studio date uh, to work. And then she came to, to my place uh, around in Midrand. And then in the studio, we hit the studio. And then I play, I remember I played the song again and again and again because I didn't send the beat for, uh, to her in advance because I don't normally do that because I feel like people end up, you know, killing creativity when they're with the beat, sitting with the beat sometimes. Yeah. We rather record it and then you don't finish it and you go home and finish it. Maybe that's more better than, you know, me sending a beat because other people, you know, they take time yeah uh, sometimes i love that studio uh that studio mood that motivation when you're in the studio together you know like you are geared up for the song you know like your focus is only on the song because you're in the studio because at home sometimes there's a lot of things going on sometimes yeah. you can you know, also lose interest so is it is it christian inspired is it um is the song um, are you are you religious in any way uh Yes, I, I'm, I'm actually a Christian, you know. Um, yes, I go, I go to church. But, you know, to be honest, the, all my songs, uh, to be honest, that's what people have been always saying. You do grow up as, you know, as a kid that, you know, went to church, play some piano at church <laughs> and so forth, which is not, you know. I don't know, maybe I have that spiritual feeling, that, that, that gospel, you know, somewhere, somehow in my music. Yeah. Because not only uh, Jerusalem, it's, it's, it's a song that you listen to it and and think that there was a song that it dropped uh in the skeleton move album it was called jesu amagaza which that one was like uh dedicated like to gospel even though it was like a dance gospel um oh, wow. yeah so uh like i always had a thing in terms of having those spiritual gems mixing with house beats and, and yeah so uh the song to be honest you know just that thing of saying you know i need to follow up on, on skeleton move come up yeah. with something new because like i remember I didn't really have enough in, in, in like enough mind whereby like you know I had that thing of saying yo I need to like this song you know the inspiration and so forth like it was just that thing of me just working normally in the studio and then she came on level then we played the beat and then we played it again and again until the words came started singing Jerusalem my Kaya and then I loved it and I remember immediately when I jumped it's just like <laughs> oh no but maybe people want to think it's a gospel song. I was like, yeah, hey, wait, wait, wait. This is yeah. the one. Let's put this one in. Yeah. Yeah. And now fast forward to 2020. COVID-19 came along. Um, we had lockdown all over the world. And people decided the song that they want to listen to, the song that's going to inspire them, not only in South Africa, but around the world, is Master KG Jerusalem. How does, how does that feel for you, brother? That's an amazing experience, right? Yo, I don't, you know, uh, you don't know, you know, how I'm feeling, you know, every day uh, looking at the videos, uh, looking at the messages all over the world, you know, like, uh, you know, like it's one of those amazing, amazing, you know, feelings, you know, like I'm so, I'm always happy, 
you know, to see yeah. the love that I'm getting all over the world. Like the charts, when I see the chat, the song is doing well, the YouTube, yeah. the TikTok, everything, you know. And and one thing that I love is that, you know, uh, I've, I've received a lot of messages from different people, different countries saying, this is our song right now during these hard times. This is our song that, you know, lifts up, lift up, us up, you know, it gives us that uh, motivation that, you know, it's not the end of, of the world. It keeps us going, you know, which is amazing uh, for me, you know, to have a song that, you know, it's actually, you know, doing something out there, not just making people dance, but at the same time, you know, doing something beautiful. Is Superstars follow, a follow-up to Jerusalem? Uh, um, yeah, I, I would say it, it is just a kind of a follow-up, even though Jerusalem never wanted to give other songs a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I remember, uh, uh, like, um, there was a time around early this year, because the song was big, big, big in South Africa last year, uh, in festive. It was untouchable. It was the song for everyone. It was number one on radio and everything. iTunes, we can call it Apple Music and everything. Yeah. So I remember early this year, the song kind of, like, laid low a bit. That's where, like, we wanted to shoot Superstar and just maybe try to make a follow-up. And then out yeah. of nowhere, the song came back. Came back. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Why do you think maybe you want to take Superstar to the next level? The, same, the song come back and then, you know, like takes uh, all the attention and the focus yeah. goes there up, up to number one. So, yeah. <laughs> so, your 100 million views on YouTube, right? Uh, that's insane, brother. <laughs> For a South African artist, that's your... You know, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, I always say, uh, even making this song, like, uh, I, I like you know, that, that, you know, that thinking about the song, you know, sometimes when you make a song, maybe you might think a lot, you know, about yeah. this song, to be honest, we never, like, even thought the song will, like, break boundaries, will, 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 will like, travel all these really? countries that's going in, you know, because also sometimes, you know, us as people are, you know, we have that thing of saying, maybe this song, People won't understand the language. We sang the song in Zulu, but like, uh, you know, sometimes those are those things are sometimes you might even think, say, ah, how can this song maybe go far? I really read, like it's not sang in English. I guess English is, is you know, is it, that you know, is that language that you know it gets people yeah. people together in terms of its songs. You know, it makes songs travel even faster than normal. But with this one, you know, we went original with our own Zulu there, but then. Uh, uh, looking at the song where it is today, it's amazing, you know. It's yeah. it's but it's beyond our imagination. Me, I never thought at all that the song will like will 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 will, will go this big. But at the same yeah. time, I also think that skeleton move, uh, um, like kind of a way, you know, like paved the way for 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 Jerusalem, you know, because um, yeah. what yes. happened is that skeleton move also went far, you know, in terms of. You know, uh, breaking those boundaries, like you know, uh, getting 25 million views was not, uh, you know, a play. So I feel like yeah. uh, maybe there was a market outside there that you know were introduced. So when Jerusalem also came in, you know, um, they like they, they, they accepted the song with both hands and gave to other people, and then it grew money. Yeah. So and the, the, lastly, the dance move. Where did that come from? <laughs> you must teach me the dance. <laughs> You know, the <laughs> dance move, <laughs> the dance move, you know, uh, uh, what happened is that um, it's actually our dance move from here in South Africa. Uh, it's a dance move that we actually do during weddings, uh, celebrations, and so forth. Oh, really? You know, We actually like uh, call it wedding dance, wedding dance, like wedding dance. Uh, it's done, like there's no wedding, you know, us, that we can do a wedding without doing that. We call it like a step wedding. So... It's a dance oh, yeah. that has always been. It's always been there. So what happened is yeah. that there's this there's these guys from Angola that I feel like they they, they saw a video, and that's what they're saying. They said they were inspired by a video they saw uh, from South Africa. So they saw a video, and then uh, re -chore like the chore like they did another chore like choreograph on the song. They added more flavor to 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 that wedding dance, yeah. and then um, they they called they, they, they were dancing playing Jerusalem. And then from there, because I remember even them when they were doing that video, they never called it Jerusalem dance. They were just dancing to Jerusalem. And then that video went viral yes. while Jerusalem was playing in the background. And then from there, people just started calling Jerusalem dance. And then they started a challenge. 
Because I remember I posted the video early this year on Instagram around 25 of February, 25 February of those guys doing that uh, dance that is being done all over the world right now. And yeah, then, that's too cool. yeah. Yeah, and, and it, it took off um, months later, you know, it took off yeah. now. I remember when I saw TikTok, I was like, what's going on? Maybe, you know, this yeah. is... <laughs> Maybe someone just, you know, someone just edited people dancing, then put my song. Maybe someone yeah. loves my song that much. But then I yeah. saw more and more videos coming in. I was like, this is really happening. And then also I saw TikTok ended up doing official and making it official as Jerusalem Dance, whereby you open, you see there's a logo, is like the, the right more about it. Like this, this is a dance, one, two, three, one, two, three. So yeah, from there I was like, yo, it's really happening, you know. But you must help me to do the dance, brother. There's, there's some yes, definitely. Dance, you know? <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. When, when we make a plan when you come down to Cape Town, yeah. yeah because I, also myself, um, the dance, I was not good at it. But then, oh, really? you know, I had to, because you know, you can, people can dance to your song while you can. Yeah. You know, you have to, I have to join them. So I had to learn it. But it's easy, you know, it's easy. I'm sure if we can just have uh, 30 minutes together, you know. Ah, yes. you'll be perfect. You even, you'll even beat me now. You'll be even do it more than me, I'm sure. No, 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 we'll do it. I will, I will try, I'll practice. Next time we talk, I will show you how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But brother, thank you for your time, man. I really do appreciate it. And um, and keep doing what you're doing, man. And keep keep making the amazing music that you are and keep inspiring. You're an, you're an amazing man, Master KG. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, it means a lot, you know. Uh, thank you for this beautiful platform to showcase who I am and what I'm about. Uh, this is so beautiful. And in terms of music, you know, going forward, I'm just going to deliver more music. I'm just going to work normally as I've always been. I don't want to put any pressure on my shoulders. You know, I, I know when you have a big song out there that is killing the world, you know, like you, you think a lot in terms of what do I hit them with the next time. So with me, I'm just going to work normally and just produce music normally the way I've always been because like that's how it happens. I just work the songs just pick up, you know. So yeah, even from now, that's what I'm gonna do. Shout out to all my fans uh, that support the music, they buy the music, they stream the music, and make sure we get all these hundred million views and 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 they make sure that like we, we are number one on the charts and so forth. Uh, we love you guys so much, and there's more music coming soon. We need Thomas. Absolutely. Love that. And when I'm in Joburg, I want to go for a spin in your car, brother. <laughs> yes, feel free. Feel free. Feel free. Make sure you hit that down. I'll give you a call. I'll give you a call. <laughs> thank, thank you, my man. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much to Master KG for joining us on the show today. Absolutely amazing to have him and just an amazing conversation. Just an amazing man, amazing story and amazing inspiration. Uh, make sure to are interacting with the show at Steven Taylor SE on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Big thank you to our corner behind the scenes and to you for watching. Uh, and of course, uh, we're going to wrap it up the show with a bit of those Master KG Jerusalem challenges, man. Next time we talk, I will hopefully be able to do that. We'll chat soon. Take care. Oh